Hi, good to see you. My name is uh, Erik and I'm the CTO of Parametric Solutions. And we're really happy that you're here. Uh, this will be a short introduction video to get you started using the platform uh, quicker. And uh, it will be quite brief, so I won't go through all the functionality in the platform here. But if you in the future would like to read up more on the different functions or um, things you can do in the platform, we have gathered some extra uh, training material. And you find all of this also together with the uh, this video. And if you want to retake the introduction tour up here on your right hand side uh, on your account menu. So you can always go back and rewatch this video or retake the introduction tour at a later stage. So the first time that you log into the platform, um, you will go to the projects page. This is the landing page for all of your projects. And um, this will be quite empty for you because you don't have uh, any projects yet. And as you can see, I have quite a few projects created already, but you will most likely have one or two demo projects just so you can play around a little bit and see how it works. So I was thinking we'll start with showing you how to create a new project in the platform. And that's actually re really easy. So um, the first thing we do is that we press the new project button. And as you can see, there are a couple of steps that we need to go through to be able to create the project. And the first step is to name the project. And I'm currently situated in Gothenburg. So let's... Um, Let's call the project Gothenburg. And when you go to the next step, you can see a map. And uh, you also have a search bar up here and a button with some additional layers that you can add to the map. So we, if we have um, a property or uh, a place in mind already, we can type it into the search bar. So in this case, I will try something close to Gothenburg. Um, and um, we can move the map to the place that we're interested in. So I think there is an area here that is quite interesting. Yeah, let's let's try this. Um, and then on your left hand side, you have a couple of different tools that you can use. And the first one is image overlay. And the idea behind this is that you can upload your own image. So if you, for example, have a picture of the the property that you're interested in, we can upload it to the map to make it easier to see exactly where the property regions are. But for this case, I'm gonna remove this and just draw it on freehand instead. Um, the next tool is called Site Boundary, and that's what we use to define the boundary of the site that we want to explore. So when I click on this tool, um, I can start drawing the outline of my site on top of the map. So I was thinking this area here might be interesting to have a closer look at. And once you're done, you press enter and you can see the area of the, um, the site that you have defined uh, together with the length of all the sides. Uh, then we can also, you can see that we have some, some information in the map already. Uh, so the buildings, for example. So by pressing buildings and uh, auto selecting the buildings, this actually gets added in as context to the, the generation of the alternatives. And um, sometimes the base data is not perfect here. So we can change the height of the building by right clicking and setting a height. And this will then affect the, how the algorithm places the buildings inside the site based on sunlight conditions and so, so on. Um, we can also split the site so dividing it into different parts by using the split site tool. So for example, if we know that this is where a road will be placed, for example, we can add that uh, as an input for the algorithm to consider. But in this case, I think we'll just uh, skip the site splitting. So when we go to the next uh, step of the setup process, we have a couple of different choices. So we have different algorithms that can perform different uh, tasks or different types of projects, basically. Uh, so we have single family housing for small single family houses, and we have industrial and also residential. Uh, and I think in this case, 
the residential algorithm will perform best. So we will try that out. And when we go into this template, you can see that there are a couple of different options that we can choose from. So we have different types of buildings. So for example, point houses and quarters, where you can define your constraint parameters on each of the different types. So we will say that we, we, we want to use point houses and quarters where the building width are a little bit thicker in the case of point houses and a little bit thinner in the case of uh, quarters. And then we can also add some additional general building inputs. And I think we'll just stick with the default for, for demonstration purposes. And once we have done this, we can press the button start generating and we will actually start uh, to generate different options for this site. So well done. And um, this will take a couple of minutes, but meanwhile, we can go into the project page and have a closer look at the site that we have defined. Uh, so when we go into the project page for the first time, we first go through the overview page and the overview page gives us a little bit more information about the site and its surroundings. So we have some additional data layers that we can add on top of the map. Uh, we can see what kind of building types or functions that we have in the, in the neighborhood. So we have a parking building, for example, close by, and we have, um, other kinds of functions or buildings. Um, we can also have a look at the connectivity. See, for example, how far from the site will, will you be able to walk in three or 10 minutes time, for example. And this is useful if it's more, um, except for example, for, for more rural location to see how far can you actually travel within a, a certain amount of time from, from this place. And this takes the roads and uh, connections into consideration. We also have the, um, the nearby transit stops that we can have a look at to see if we have good public transport connectivity. And we also have a section for demographics where you can see how, how heavily exploited this, this site is basically. So we have a urbanization level that gives you a, a quick understanding for how urban the, 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 um, the area is compared to its surroundings. So that's the, um, the basic site information that we have. And you can also invite other users from this um, so you can see here on the left-hand side, the program has understood where the um, the area is placed, and you can press the share project button. And here you basically have two different options. You can either uh, invite a different user by email to the project by typing in the, the email address to to the user you want to invite. So I'm gonna invite my second. Uh, email to the project. And I can choose what role I want to add this user as. So uh, once I press the send invitation button, I can see that I have sent the invite and um, this email will get the an email where you can either accept or decline the project invitation. You can also share a public link to this project if you want to share it with someone who doesn't have a account already. So by creating a public link, you, you get the link that you can share with anybody, but also be cautious with this link, but because everybody that has access to this link will actually be able to view the project as well. So only send this link to people that you actually want to be able to uh, look at the project. Uh, you can also open up the project in Google Maps, for example, by pressing this button up here, uh, which can be useful if you want to see what the, the site looks like today. And we can actually see that there, there is some project going on on this site. So that's a little bit interesting. All right, so now for the alternatives. So in this menu up here, you can go into the scenarios page where certain amount of scenarios will have been created 
based on your inputs. And we can start exploring different ways of building. So in this example here, we have a couple of open quarters and a point house. And you can jump between different design scenarios by pressing this button up here. Um, so let's say that this this might be an interesting option, for example, with a couple of point houses down here and a semi-open quarter in here. Um, we have some tools where you can start exploring, for example, the daylight situation. So we can try out how the shadows will look like throughout different uh, times of the year. And you can also uh, go into full screen mode and you can do some measurements on the map and so on. But what's really interesting is that together with this, we also have some data connected with each alternative. And all the data for a specific scenario, um, you can see up here in the uh, right-hand side menu. So in this particular option, we have 179 units with this particular distribution. We can also look into the areas, the floor factor, for example, or the footprint area. Um, and some ratios between uh, uh, floor area and the footprint area, for example. So it gives you an easy overview of the, the scenario. If we go back to all the different scenarios, um, we can see that we can actually go into a project with more scenarios, this one, for example. If we go into the scenarios page, we can see that um, we have a list of 19 scenarios in this case and it's it can sometimes be a bit hard to get an overview of all these different design options so we have built a couple of tools that makes it easier to sort and filter out the options that are most relevant for our specific case so if we go into the filters menu first we can see that um, all the data for each alternative um, gets represented as a line in this graph and this is nice because it makes it easier to filter out certain intervals. So let's say that we, for example, are only interested in options with, um, let's say, between 140 and 160 different apartments. And uh, we also want to have the one with the highest uh, GFA, for example. Then we can, we can start filter out that option. And we can also um, change the look of the cards. So let's say that we are interested in different parameters. Then we can uh, choose the, the card option up here. And we can choose what parameters to show directly on the cards to make it easier to find the ones that are relevant for our case. Um, we can also compare scenarios by pressing the compare button on each, each scenario. So let's say that we, for example, want to compare this scenario with, um, let's take a different one, with this scenario, let's say. So you can see that they both get added to the compare page. And when we go into the compare page, we can see them side by side and we can see how their unit distribution varies and um, the number of different apartments and all the same data that we saw in the detailed project page, basically. And we can also go into the scenario directly from here. So that's a lot of information in a short amount of time. So I hope this was comp comprehensible. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to go more in depth with some functionalities and uh, see how you can really use the platform for your purposes, uh, we have gathered some ex extra training material that you can have a look at. And also don't hesitate to contact us to get more um, hands-on support if you want to. So thank you for uh, tuning into this quick demonstration and uh, hope that you will like the platform and uh, find it useful for your work. Thank you so much.